Russia, year 1984, under the government of Konstantin Chernenko in the Soviet Union, while tanks and soldiers were marching on the streets, a man was about to create something big. This man is Alexei Pachitnov. He was working for the Dorotnitz Computer Center in Russia. He loves a kind of puzzle called Pentomino. But what is Pentomino? Let's take a look at it. If we take a grid like this and you fill 5 adjacent squares, you get a pentomino. It's like a domino, but with 5 squares. In this case, a pentomino can have different forms. If we try to see how much we can get, we will find some equals by reflection or rotation. But if we ignore them, we will get 12 in total. And we could remember them easily just knowing the last word of the alphabet and the word Philippine. Let's take a look at how this works. With all of the pieces, let's try to fill this rectangle. To do it, you can rotate and reflect the pieces. When you fill the rectangle, you will have one. Going back to talk about Alexei, he started to apply his favorite puzzle onto the computer. The 5 square pentomino pieces become in a 4 square pieces falling to the bottom of the screen. It was the player's job to rotate and fit them together. He called this game Tetris from the Greek word Fall. The first color version of Tetris was developed in the summer of 1985, and it was this version. On a trip to the Hungarian Institute of Technology in 1986, Robert Stein saw the game and wanted to make business with the creator of the game. Stein spoke to Alexei about buying the game for something like £10,000 and he accepted. Stein sold the game to Microsoft and to Spectrum Holobyte and Spectrum were about to release the first Tetris, but in this moment Stein get a telex from a company called Elor saying that they are illegally trying to release Tetris because it belongs to them and they don't give permission to anybody. But Tetris was made by Alexei. Why Elor say that? It's because in Russia at these years was no notion of intellectual property rights. The individual ideas were owned by the state, and Elor was the department of the government dealing with this. Stein was summoned to Russia, and they started to ask him why he was doing illegal things. They were angry with Stein, but with his persuasion, he owned the right of Tetris on personal computer. Spectrum released the game and resolved. 100,000 copies. Tetris was making a lot of money, but the Russians were not being paid, so Nikolai Belikov from Elor began to think how to force Stein to pay. Stein gave permission to Tengen to produce the game, and Tengen gave permission to Nintendo. Nintendo were about to release a handheld console and wanted the Tetris game as a part of the package. Hank Rogers was the man picked by Nintendo to get the handheld Tetris rights. Hank contacted Stein to represent him in Russia. Stein agreed and Hank sent to Stein $25,000, but Stein had the same agreement with Microsoft. Hank started to get nervous because it was taking so long to get the Tetris rights. By February 1989, Hank was tired of waiting, so he decided to get the right himself. Hank took a plane to Moscow, but he wasn't the only one flying to Moscow. Stein finally took a plane and Mirosov sent Maxwell secretly to move negotiation for the interest. They wanted to meet the same day but separately. The first to arrive to the Elor office was Hank and so to Belikov the Nintendo version of Tetris that was the most sold in Japan, but Belikov said that the rights only belongs to Stein and only for using on personal computers. Belikov said to Hank to write everything he wants on a paper and they will meet next day. One hour later, Stein arrived to Elor office to earn extra rights of Tetris, but Belikov put in the table the last contract who Stein was not paying, and Belikov said to meet Stein next day to show what Maxwell was going to offer him. The last to meet Belikov was Maxwell, and he was asked about why he was giving permission to make Tetris to another company. Maxwell said that they don't have the rights, it was just a period version of Tetris. Belikov became angry but said to Maxwell to go back to the UK and make him an offer. But only Hank was in advantage to earn the rights because he became friend of Alexei, the creator of Tetris. Stein came back to meet Belikov and get the rights that already had. 
but without paying attention to what the Russians want. Also this day Hank go to meet Belikov, but this time Hank was with Alexei, and Hank signed a contract to have the handheld and console rights. Atari, under the name of Tengen, made a Tetris version for console, but Nintendo, who has the rights of console and a handheld, said to Atari to stop marketing and selling. Atari sued Nintendo, but the judge granted all the video games rights to Nintendo. Finally, Nintendo sold 8 million Tetris cartridges on the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Tetris was the key to the success of Game Boy, which has sold 70 million worldwide. And Alexei, after moving to USA, working by himself some years, was hired by Microsoft. They said it wasn't humanly possible, but now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with the outrageous new game, Tetris. And for head-to-head -head competition, use the revolutionary video link and blow your opponent away. Game Boy, only from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, portable power. Now it's time to take a look at the Game Boy Tetris version, under my opinion, the best one. After the credits we will have the main screen where we will have two options playing alone or playing versus another person connecting two Game Boys with the cable saw in the advertisement. The next step is select between two game modes and the kind of music we want to play. In the next one we choose the level where we want to start and we can see the top scores. The game has five different parts to pay attention. The first one on the left is the game screen, where we have the blocks falling from the sky. On the top right we have the score. Looking down the level, the lines and in the bottom as important as the game screen, the next piece that is going to fall. The objective of this game is simple, rotate the pieces that are falling from the sky to fill the gaps, complete the lines to the them and enter points. The game have basic controls, in the pad we can do different things, pressing to the left the block is going to move to the left, pressing to the right the block moves to the right and if we press down the block is going to fall faster. Looking at the right of the Game Boy, we have the B button that allows us to rotate the piece in the counterclockwise direction and the A button to rotate it in the clockwise direction. Now it's time to see how both game types works. First one, the A mode is a test of your endurance where you must try to get the highest score by completing as many lines as possible. During the course of the game, the level gradually increases and the game gets increasingly harder. When the blocks have reached the top of the game field, that's the end of the game. The other game type is the B type. The object of this game is complete 25 lines. Once all 25 lines are complete, the score will be calculated. First, select and set the failing speed of the block and the height of the beginning block pile at the level setting screen. The higher the height settings, the more random blocks will be placed in the game field at the beginning of the game. When the blocks have reached the top of the game field, or when you have complete 25 lines, that's the end of the game. To finish this section, let's take a look at the different music type we can choose to listen while we are playing the game. And to end the video, let's take a look at Tetris along the time.